we will say some things about safety and risk when playing in this way. Uh, and I think it's important to build a kind of uh, trust and dialogue where um, where you don't constantly have to ask the other person if it's okay. Um, like verbally or physically, um, but instead to be there where you can trust that the other one will say if something needs to be adjusted or if there is very little time uh, that you have for that position or if you need to uh, stop the whole thing. Mm. So that, uh, yeah, I think it's um, for the person tying that there there can be a kind of calmness uh, to it. That uh, it means that uh, uh, me, the one being tied, as long as I don't uh, clearly say or show that something needs to be changed or stopped, it means that uh, what is happening is fine. Uh, and I think that kind of trust is crucial in order to be to be pushed. Mm. And there also has to be the experience, the experience for me being tired that when I actually say something, um, uh, the one tying me will listen to that. Mm. So for me, basically, uh, the things that I say. <laughs> Is, is if uh, something needs to be adjusted because of uh, nerves. Uh, like the, the right wrap has to be moved upwards in order to continue. Mm. Or if it's a position uh, where I feel like I will not be able to stay here, uh, then I will say like, I have very little time here. Uh, and then very rarely, uh, but it happens. I can feel like I, I can't take it anymore. I'm completely empty. I have to rest. Uh. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, when you're doing this kind of scene, general uh, guidelines around uh, negotiation and consent doesn't necessarily work so well. Uh, because it's you can't really decide rules and then expect to feel the same way this, once the session starts. So there needs to be more than just... I mean, you should always negotiate if there is something you really don't want to happen or uh, something you know you're always uncomfortable with or you don't want to do today or something you really are open for and so on, like practical things. Uh, but I think the more it's more important uh, to just, um, how do I say this, like preserve the, the natural sense of like socializing it. What, I'm, what I actually mean is you, you can't, you basically can't play very intensely with someone you don't know very well and don't know very well in a situation like this. Because there's no general, really, uh, rules for this is okay and this is not and uh, this will always be nice suffering or this is always a positive or negative expression of going through something. Uh, like. Uh, people feel very different to Thai and they express very differently. The same person can have many different types of expressing the same thing. Like in one case, uh, a scene can really seem like, oh, the, the model really wants out of it. She's really does not want this or, uh, and actually this person wants to be in this state of like, that feels distressed. And another person can be extremely like stoic or on another day, the same person can be extremely stoic. And it's still like an expression of uh, a similar state. Like mm, it's, it's very difficult to say 
look for this and if the person is behaving like this or breathing like this or making these kind of sounds it's fine you can proceed and if this it's not some things are common like uh, you you start to pick up on cues for if something if someone is reaching a limit or not but in the end the only way to play really safely and i mean mostly like relationally emotionally is to really figure each other out on an intuitive level so uh, i'm someone who ties a lot of people and i think i do like torturous play with um, quite a lot of people too but if it's someone that i just met or i just started tying with i never take like big risks like i never uh, prolong when someone is really starting to uh, feel stressed like i don't i try to avoid going really close to the limit and the more uh, we get the feeling for each other the longer we know each other and the more we have tied together the more I feel like, uh, yeah, it's okay that we push a little further or we try out a little bit new things or I add a little bit uh, higher risk. And this is not only because I learn more about uh, the person's body language or uh, physique or emotional life or whatever, but also because with time there is a trust built and I don't mean trust as I trust that you will not injure me because you're a good rigger or I trust that you are a tough uh, model because you can take a lot. But I mean that more that we trust that whatever happens during the session, uh, we will respect each other's experience. And after the session, however it went, uh, we will feel good about each other. and. We, we respect uh, whatever happened to the other person uh, because I think the worst thing that can happen in a seminar session is that something feels really intense in a bad or a good way uh, and then afterwards you feel abandoned or you feel misunderstood or you feel like the intentions of the other person was unclear and this can really like it's like having like hangover anxiety, <laughs> you know, and it can also really if you felt like unsafe, it can really put you off the, to continue exploring. So I think this is the most important part. And uh, it's difficult to teach. How are you intuitive? <laughs> like this is not a thing, but some practical things can be. Yeah, like I said, take time, really keep it simple and slow and Try to view uh, each session and a rope partnership in general as kind of um, a research of uh, the other person and of yourself with this person. And after each session to uh, yeah, really check in and not just, oh, was it good, but uh, like be open to listen. Like the, I think the biggest skill one can have is to hold space for the other person and uh, it can be something that is very difficult to learn to be able to hold space and yeah not just project yourself and your own worries and your own stress or your own desires uh, so much on your partner that it kind of drowns out their experience <laughs>